I'm stuck in the hardest Minecraft escape room, the finale, and I'm up against a few of the smartest Minecraft YouTubers to see who can beat this escape room the fastest. Let's do it. When I spawned into the first room, I quickly skimmed the book and the lectern in front of me and then opened the chest. Out of the past three escape rooms, this was definitely the most confusing loot pile. I checked under the lectern and found yet another Nautilus shell. I then gathered the chest and crafting table and took a look at the task at hand. I needed six blocks to pillar out and I currently had four of them. I went into the crafting table and switched the guy to show craftable to see what I could make. It definitely wasn't much. I could make shears, iron nuggets, sugar, or a weighted pressure plate. None of these options were too appealing, and to make matters worse, they were all irreversible except for the iron nugget. But there was one more part of the room that I hadn't inspected yet, the massive pile of blocks in the corner. I began checking and soon discovered them all to be droppers, or so I thought at first, because right there, camouflaged in between all the droppers, was a furnace. I had to smelt something. Thing. But what? I marked the furnace with an item frame and continued my search. Just as I was losing hope, I found a piece of raw iron in one of the droppers and now things were beginning to come together. But just to make sure, I broke one of them to see if there was anything underneath. There wasn't. And did I really have so little dignity that I was going to spend five minutes breaking every single droppers? No! Okay, maybe. There was nothing. That left the only tool at my disposal to be the furnace. I had to smelt something, and I had an idea of what that was going to be. The only thing I could smelt raw iron. But now came the question of what to use as fuel. I had a bunch of different options and one wrong move could end the entire run right here. I had to be careful. After a bit of deliberation, I decided to go with the daylight sensor because while it's the most outlandish item, it doesn't act as a full block and surprisingly enough can actually be used as fuel. This decision opened up a new crafting recipe. A bucket. Now while a water bucket would be great, an empty bucket on its own doesn't really help that much, so I decided to hold off on crafting it. There had to be a better answer. I decided to try crafting iron nuggets to see if it would unlock a crafting recipe that I didn't know about. And there it was. Chains. Using the other two iron, I crafted two chains and was just barely able to make it out of the first room. In the next room, two things caught my eye. The weird end portal frame shape in the corner and the nether portal on the far left. I decided to check out the end portal frames first and found many little holes in between them. This was a classic item hider, but one problem, there were no items. I carefully searched through each hole in the bedrock and there was nothing. Maybe this was a decoy for something, but I couldn't figure out for what. So I decided to move on and go into the nether, but just as I was entering the nether portal, something caught my eye, an item frame. In the cracks of the end portal, there was a small block inside of a frame. It was hidden in a way that it was just out of view if you were standing below it. Inside was a copper block, which raised my block total to one. One out of seven. Hopefully the nether is more useful. When I went through the portal, I found myself in a small box with nothing but a hopper. Inside was my third Nautilus shell, and I then had the thought to check if there was another hopper behind this one. I threw an item on top to see if it would flow in, but to my surprise, it didn't. So armed with this evidence, I broke the hopper and found yet another locked one underneath. Inside that was an iron nugget and a piece of sugarcane. On my way out, I decided to check if I would spawn in a new location if I crouched at the end of the portal. Yes, this actually works. Remember, I need seven blocks and I only have one. That's not nearly enough, so there has to be something more to this room that I'm missing. But what? I checked the portal frames again, but there was nothing there. I couldn't just give up on room two, there was no way. So I tried to think about it logically. Alright, alright, listen, here's what, here's what I'm thinking. There's another portal here, this is just like the last one, there's another portal here, and I went through it, and yeah, there was a little cool trick with the hop or whatever, but they wouldn't give me a nether portal? Like, why there be a nether portal here if the point was just for me to get- it seems like it's too easy. Right now, I need seven blocks? Seven blocks, and I have one. And there's nothing left in here, I already, already checked. I assume this is just for symmetry to distract me, so I don't have to worry about that. But, I don't know, why would there be a nether portal here? if the only point is just getting an item. I then stretched my FOV to try and see outside the room, and to my surprise, on the last wall, I actually found something. Behind the wall, there was a hidden room with either a piston arm or some sort of door. Either way, I had to break through the wall, but how? It was solid bedrock. I tried to see if there was a hopper minecart that would pick up my items if I threw them against the wall, but that didn't work. But it did give me another idea. What if... What if it's only open when I'm in the nether. 
no way that's it, right? Is that it? So, I tossed an item into the portal, and to my amazement, a hole formed in the wall revealing a door. This was great, and to make matters even better, I also found a hopper with an iron nugget, another hopper with an iron nugget behind it, and a crafting table behind that one. And on my way out, a torch. Using the crafting table, I made my copper block into three lightning rods, which was a hasty decision, but one I felt confident making. After I exited the door closed behind me, reminding me to grab my prismarine and get out as fast as possible. Back in the room, I placed down my crafting table to get ready to pillar towards the exit, but I noticed I could also craft a lantern. This made perfect sense given the iron nuggets and torches, so I decided to go for it. And just before I pillar it up, I counted to see if I had enough blocks. Two from the door, one from the crafting table, three from the lightning rods, and a lantern. Wait. Wait, what? That's six and a half blocks, I need seven. That lantern won't let me make it all the way up. I was half a block short. If I placed these lightning rods and I couldn't find a way to turn that half block into a full block, I was going to lose. This small calculation could cost me the whole run, so I broke down my setup and began to think. I was almost positive I had all the items I needed and I just had to figure out how to use them. One of these items in my inventory had to be useful, but I couldn't find a single one. I spent upwards of 10 minutes just thinking, studying the layout and trying to construct a scenario that would let me get up. But then, something caught my eye. The end portal frames, specifically the gaps. These weren't full blocks. At first, I thought the top portal frames were just for symmetry to distract me from the copper, but now I was thinking that that might not be the only reason. What if the actual exit was somewhere on top of the end portal frames and that's where I had to go? At this point, I was out of options, so after a bit of deliberation, I decided to send it and pillar upwards. It was now or never. And to my pleasant surprise, right above the frames was a hole in the wall leading to an exit, and the old exit I could now see was a decoy the entire time. On my way to room 3, I turned turned my head and noticed a pig outside the first room. On the pig's fence was a sign, so I zoomed in and saw that it said subscribe, which reminds me that if you are enjoying the video, then please consider subscribing. I'm currently in a race against Minecraft itself, they're on version 1.19 and I'm only on Weefy's version 1.15, so if you want to help me win, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe. And while I'm here, thank you to Seawalk Gaming for inspiring this video format. Room 3 had a glazed terracotta floor, a hopper in the ceiling, and a single fence post by the edge of an opening. Chances are I had to somehow escape through that one block hole, so I grabbed the fence and turned my attention to the corner of the room where I found a wooden axe. Did someone say world at it? Okay, maybe not. I began mining the glazed terracotta floor because of course there was going to be something here and I actually found a hopper under the first one I broke. Inside was a Nautilus shell and now I had to break everything because what if there was another secret container? All the while though, I was thinking of how I could reach the hopper. I tried jumping at first, but it was one block too high to reach. I had zero blocks to stand on and somehow I needed to grab that hopper. Just as I was finished breaking the final glazed terracotta, I had the idea to use the fence. I placed it in the corner of the broken area and tried jumping on it several times but to no avail. The hopper wasn't budging. I was completely stuck. Nothing in my inventory seemed like it would be of any help. I could craft sugar, but that's not gonna do anything. So, I began to organize my inventory into things that might be helpful, like fences, and things that definitely weren't helpful, like Nautilus shells. Even then, I still couldn't figure out how to reach the hopper. Maybe I could use the fence and the item frames? Nope. But then as I went in my inventory to reorganize it, my cursor just barely brushed past something. Thing. It was an empty text box. Or was it? It was actually a stained glass pane. I have no idea how long it's been on my inventory, but it was indeed a block I could use to reach the hopper. Inside was a prismarine shard and a trap door, and now it was time to escape. Only one problem, I still didn't know how to get out. I assumed that I had to build some random mechanism using the trap door and the fence, but nothing came to mind. Maybe I could get on top of the fence and then use the trap door to get into crawl mode. It was worth a shot. Except for some reason, this stupid trap door kept flying in all the wrong directions. I don't know what it is about the fence post, but something was not cooperating. Each time I broke it, it would soar almost two full blocks away from me. So I tried to be smart and stand on the edge of the fence as I broke it. But then, disaster struck. The trap door just shot straight into the exit and it was stuck. There was no way to get it back, and now all I had left was a fence post. This was awful. In five minutes, the trapdoor would despawn and I would be completely out of options. I was going to lose because of this unlucky RNG. I began running around trying to figure out what I could possibly do to save this situation. The glass pane wasn't going to help, and there was literally nothing left in the room. It was over. Then, one idea came to mind. 
In a last ditch effort, I decided to place the fence on the opening to hopefully push out the trap door, and it worked. I had now saved the trap door, but in doing so, lost the fence forever. The only way to escape was probably using both of those items, and this hadn't really improved my situation all that much. Unless I could figure out how to get through using only a trap door, if that was even possible. I attempted to stand underneath it and spam space in hopes of crawling through the opening. It didn't work. Well, maybe if I couldn't crawl through the bottom, I could crawl from the top. So I placed the trapdoor on top and noticed I could get into crawl mode if I jumped. This was my last option. If this didn't work, I was going to have to call it quits and give up. So I backed up and took a leap of faith. And another one. And another one. Until finally, I was through. I couldn't believe it. Somehow I had turned that definite loss into a victory. I carefully grabbed the trap door and made my way into the next room. This next room had a massive area covered by end portal frames. Inside a hopper I found a saddle and inside one on the other side I found a carrot on a stick. I also noticed a few one block tunnels and slowly I was beginning to understand what I had to do. I couldn't just crawl inside because the gaps between the iron trap doors were too wide for a player but they weren't too wide for a pig. After checking to see if I couldn't just cheese the map and go on top, I got in my pig and hopped into the invisible maze. This level was more of a fun one, and while I couldn't see where I was going at all times, I didn't have to think that much and just moved in the general direction of the items. Across the maze, I picked up a nautilus shell, a prismarine shard, another shell, a sugar cane, and a carpet. After finding the exit, I realized the two pre-placed blocks were too far apart to get the pig up. So with a heavy heart, I did what I had to do and exited the room. The first thing I saw in room 5 were three target blocks with dispensers on the ceiling. I already had an idea of what I had to do, I just needed a crafting table. Oh, perfect. I converted my three sugar cane into three pieces of paper and crafted fireworks. From the droppers, I got my seventh shell, a piece of prismarine, and my eighth shell. So far this room was pretty easy, but now I actually had to get out. With the items I had, I could only craft one thing a prismarine block. This would bring my block total to one out of a required three. I also had the carpet with me, but that wouldn't work as a block unless I had something to put it on. As it was permanent, I decided to hold off on crafting until I couldn't do anything else. After a bit more inspection, that conclusion seemed imminent. Prismarine it is. Now that I couldn't make anything else, I decided to also break the crafting table, and to my luck, it revealed a stone cutter behind it. Using the stone cutter, I turned my prismarine slabs into two, and now all I needed was a third block. Maybe I could place the slabs in a way that would let me go higher, but that didn't seem to work. Either I was missing an item, or I had everything I needed and I just didn't know how to use it. I turned on hitboxes to try to spot a fake bedrock, but to no avail. I was stuck. Okay, let's let's think about this. I have I need three blocks to get up, and I have two. I need one. I need something to place this carpet on. That's that's what I'm getting here. I can't place it on any of these. That doesn't make any sense. I can't place it on an item frame unless there's just a glitch I don't know of. I need a way to elevate this carpet, and and there's nothing I can really do. I I can break this, but I. What if there's like, what if there's something that's already here? Like a like a barrier, not a barrier. Nope. Whoa, whoa. Oh, it's a str. Oh, 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 oh! It's a structure void. I get it. In the next room, I was greeted by a donkey named Gerard. Inside his chest was a heart of the sea, which meant that once I got my hands on a crafting table, I could make a conduit. In the corner of the room, I picked up a wet sponge that was dripping into a seemingly pointless air block. Just like the fence room, the exit to this puzzle was a one block gap. I had to figure out how to get into crawl mode using this random assortment of items and a donkey. I tried to tame Gerard for a very long minute until I realized I had a saddle and he was already tamed. I noticed there was also a staircase leading back into the previous room so maybe I could get Gerard there and somehow steal some items, but when I rode him to the top he didn't fit through the gap so that was a bust. The obvious solution in my mind was to somehow use Gerard to get through the one block gap. The only question left was how. I rode up to the staircase to check if I could dismount into crawl mode but to my surprise something even better happened. I dismounted two blocks up, meaning that if I rode Gerard up to the hole, there was a chance that I would land right inside. This interaction also revealed something else. Instead of placing me on the left where there was air, I was placed two blocks up on the right, meaning that when I dismount, the first spot to check will always be on the right side. Using that information, I lined myself up carefully and got it right on the first try. I was through. 
When I dropped into this room, I immediately crafted a conduit because let's be real, what else am I going to do with 8 nautilus shells and a heart of the sea? When I turned back around, I also noticed the exit that I had originally had gone through had closed behind me, meaning that I was now stuck inside the room. At the far edge was a nether portal covered with a wall of bedrock. Particles were traveling through though, so I knew it was lit. Because there was no obvious exit, I assumed that to get out I would have to activate some sort of redstone to remove the bedrock cover. But what do I need to do? Beneath the crafting table, I found a furnace. I could either smelt the rock pork chop that I got from my pig, or I could smelt the wet sponge into a dry one. The latter seemed much more obvious, but I was hesitant because there was nothing I could really do with a dry sponge, and it was a permanent decision. This was definitely gonna be tricky. Because there wasn't an immediate exit, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. I had to find something that I could do, but where? I couldn't craft anything, nor could I risk breaking the furnace. For the point of the video, I'll cut most of it out, but I spent ages just racing back and forth trying to figure this room out. There were so little options, yet nothing seemed right. But just as I was losing hope, I tried stretching to Quake Pro FOV and checking outside the room. On wall 1, there was nothing. Wall 2, also nothing. But on wall 3, something caught my eye. Wheat. Wheat on a piece of farmland being observed by an observer, and all of that leading into a command block. Now all I had to do was find a way to update that farmland and I would be home free. But how? Well, what different block states does farmland have? It can be farmland or dirt, or it can be hydrated or dehydrated, and that second option is just what I needed. If I could hydrate that farmland, it would hopefully let me progress somehow. Something you might not know is that farmland can be hydrated through anything, it doesn't have to just be dirt. So if I could get my hands on a bucket of water, I could place it right next to the wall and update the farmland. Now I just needed a bucket of water, and after a bit of thought, I figured out how. With my milk bucket. I popped my wet sponge and axe into the furnace, and right before it finished smelting, I drank my milk and put the bucket in the bottom slot, capturing the water from the wet sponge. I also, of course, checked if I could just water out. I could not. So I placed the water bucket by the wall and waited, and after a few seconds, the farmland hydrated, and the cover of the nether portal was gone. On to the final room. On the other side of the nether portal, I was met with a little ledge that I used my sponge, crafting table, and conduit to scale. But then I realized that if I just jumped straight from the portal lip, I could save one of them, so I kept the sponge and made my way through. The final room was massive. There was a sign in the center asking me for a code, with a panel of levers and an assortment of random blocks behind it. Behind me, there was a massive wall covered in buttons that all seemed to do nothing. The other three walls were mixtures of different colors. Yellow, green, and purple. Contrary to what the book had outlined, this room was an actual puzzle. I needed to figure out what the code was given all of these details. Whenever I flicked one of the levers, I could hear a piston, but that didn't give me much info. I then decided to check the barrel in the back, and it had plenty of things. Everything from bedrock to a light block. A light block! I forgot that was even a thing. I had no idea what any of these things meant or how they were supposed to help me find the code. I spent around 20 minutes just wandering with the items, trying to see some sort of pattern or figure out what I was supposed to do. I came up empty. Nothing was working. I tried flicking down the levers where there were no blocks and flicking down the levers where there were blocks. Nope. I turned on F3 and saw that there were a ton of entities behind the wall in front of me, but when I waited a few moments, no sound was made, so I had no idea what they could be. The walls didn't seem to reveal anything either, so I turned my attention to the buttons. Once again, I went into Quake Pro to see if one of the buttons actually activated something. None of them seemed to attach to anything. That meant that it was either a decoy or just out of my field of vision. So I began pressing all the buttons above me until something happened. It was a pillager noise. Pillagers? What could that mean? That would explain the entities, but what next? Did the letters match the blocks in front of me? No, that wasn't it. What did I have in my inventory that connected to pillagers? The answer could only be one thing. A bell. So I decided to ring it. And there it was. A very obscure mechanic that makes pillagers glow when you ring a bell. And that was the answer. I would love to know what you guys thought about the rest of the symbols in the room and how they connected to the pillagers, because I honestly have no idea. If you want to see the other YouTubers compete in the escape room, that video will be out on my second channel, Tweefies, in a couple of days. But as always, peace out, have a good one, 
I'll see you next time.